There are endless options to choose from when it comes to buying lenses for your documentary project. There are photo lenses, cinema lenses, zooms, prime, stabilized, autofocus, manual focus, slow, fast, and it's easy for the paradox of choice to set in. That is that there are so many options to choose from that it's practically impossible to choose at all. Well, in this video, I'm going to simplify things by pointing you towards the most essential lenses for run and gun documentary filmmaking. I'll start my recommendations with if you can only have one single lens on a project, what you should choose. Then I'll move on to the ideal two lens package. And finally, I'll share my holy trinity of lenses for a three lens doc package. And let me just say, I think that third lens might surprise you. We'll see. Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Austin Meyer. I'm an Oakland-based documentary filmmaker, cinematographer, National Geographic explorer, and today's recommendations are based on the past 10 years working on projects for outlets such as HBO, Hulu, National Geographic, The New York Times, Washington Post, and more. I think it's important to say upfront that there really is a power in keeping your kit small and light. The documentary art form is all about intimate access and your ability to adapt on the fly. So whether you only have the budget for one lens or two, or you're just looking to scale down equipment to scale up your adaptability, lean into a minimal lens package as a strength, not a weakness. So let's jump into the one lens package. Essentially, this is the lens I would choose if I was challenged to make an entire documentary with only one single lens. The winner? is the 24 to 105 F4 lens. Now this is a standard focal length across lens manufacturers from Sony to Canon to Sigma. I shoot on the Sony FX6, so I personally use the Sony 24 to 105 lens, which retails new for 1300 or used in the $700 range. And I think the value you get from this lens is just fantastic. If you only have one lens in your kit, you need a lens that's gonna be incredibly versatile. And that's what you get with the 24 to 105. At a focal length of 24, you get a really nice wide angle perspective. 24 is this really nice focal range in documentary work because it forces you as the cinematographer to get really close to the action. And when you do that, there's an immediacy and a presence that the audience can feel when watching the footage. 24 is also great for wide establishing shots or landscapes. Then on the other end of the spectrum, a focal length of 105 gives you a ton of range to zoom in to capture details. And it gives you that nice background compression with a decent bokeh or background image blur. Oftentimes when I shoot with this lens, it feels in the edit like there was two cameras shooting because the 24 and the 105 focal lengths feel so different. Now, of course, any single lens is going to have downsides. And for this lens, the major downside is that it's not very fast. At F4, it's not going to be ideal in low light and you won't get the shallow depth of field that other lenses offer. So if you're going to be filming a lot at night or your project involves a ton of sit down interviews, this might not be the lens to choose. However, for solo shooter, unpredictable, running around, scene based documentary work, it's great because not only does it have great image quality, but the F4 means this lens is very compact, it's lightweight and it also has image stabilization. And don't just take my word for it, during this year's 2024 Sundance Film Festival, multiple documentaries were shot almost exclusively on the 24 to 105. Agent of Happiness, which was filmed in Bhutan, was shot on the Canon C300 Mark II with the Canon 24 to 105. In regards to the lens, the director and DP Arun Batari said, it's hard to keep changing lenses in documentary because it can destroy the authenticity of the moments. The 24 to 105 Canon has great range and works very well in most conditions, so it was the go-to lens. Similarly, the film And So It Begins was shot primarily on the Canon 24 to 105. DP Bruce Sakaki said he made that decision because Quote, this setup facilitated a nimble and efficient workflow, enabling us to adapt to evolving situations. Beyond Sundance, series like The Trade or features such as Cartel Land have also leaned on the 24 to 105 because of these qualities. So if you can only have one lens in your documentary project, in my opinion, go with the 24 to 105 F4. But let's say you're getting started and want to invest in two lenses for your kit. What should you go with then? Well, for that, I recommend going with the 24 to 70 2.8 and the 70 to 200 
2.8. When I made the jump into full-time freelance documentary filmmaking and video journalism back in 2018, I was looking to invest into two lenses. And these were the ones I purchased and they have absolutely crushed it for me over the past six years. And I feel so grateful to have them in my kit. In fact, this combination of two lenses has been so rock solid for me that I didn't purchase another lens until 2021. That's four years of riding these two lenses on every project from National Geographic documentaries to big budget Hulu projects to filming commercial projects with NFL stars just two lenses. Now, I should mention, if you're interested in the technical specs of any of these lenses, there are going to be other YouTube channels that can break it down much better than I can. What I can do is speak from real world experience, having these lenses out in the field as a full-time documentarian. And that real world experience makes me say that this two lens package is just really solid. As far as lenses can go, they're not crazy expensive especially if you get the V1 versions of the lenses. They're light, they can easily fit into a pouch or small backpack and cover a huge range from the 24 wide angle to the 200 telephoto, all at an aperture of 2.8. This means that you're not only getting versatility in the types of images and coverage you can get, but you can also get a shallow depth of field and the ability to shoot in lower light situations. I also love how these lenses complement each other if you need to do a lot of sit down interviews. I'll set up my A cam on the 24 to 70 with the aperture at 2.8, and then I'll throw the 70 to 200 on a B cam at 2.8. And suddenly I have this dynamic and cinematic two camera look. When I have these two lenses, I feel like I can get just about any shot I need from filming in a car or footage that is in tight, intimate settings to filming details, wildlife, and any shots where I want the beautiful compression that the 70 to 200 provides. And to minimize the time required to change lenses uh, between the two, I often film wearing a belt system or a waist pouch and store the lens I am not using in there. Then anytime I need to make a quick change, I can swap things out in no time. So for your two lens package, go with the sturdy, go with the trusted, go with the lenses you will see on almost every documentary that uses still lenses. That's the 24 to 70 2.8, which is filming right now. And then the 70 to 200 2.8. And lastly, my holy trinity, the lens package that I would go with if I had three lenses to make a documentary. I would first go with the 24 to 70 2.8 or 24 to 105 f4. Those are kind of interchangeable in this lineup for me. Then I'd go with the 70 to 200 2.8. So the same lineup that I just shared in, in part two. But then for the third lens, the third lens I would go with a 50 millimeter prime, specifically a 50 millimeter F 1.4. Now I have the Sigma Art 50 millimeter 1.4 and the 50 millimeter is my choice to complete the holy trinity of lenses because its aperture of 1.4 really opens up the palette. It adds a whole new look and feel in the kit compared against the other two lenses I mentioned. And as I already said, those first two lenses cover so much ground. I mean, I have them on the camera pretty much all day, but ever since I bought the 50 millimeter prime, I've been shocked with how often that I reach for it. Originally, I got the 50 prime while working on a Hulu series called Dear Santa that required me to light and film a bunch of interviews. And those interviews were often in small rooms, houses where we had limited control over set decoration other than some Christmas lights, which you can see I'm still using here on my set. So instead of shooting interviews on the 24 to 70, I got the 50 millimeter prime so that I could make the depth of field even more shallow. I wanted the fall off from interview subject to background to be as fast as possible and to have a bokeh that would look just nice and blurry in any environment. And it worked great. In fact, it works so great that the 50 millimeter prime has become my go-to lens for filming interviews ever since. Here is another example of it in use on one of my recent projects for the New York Stock Exchange. For this series, we interviewed CEOs in a small conference room. It was another example where it was great to have the shallow depth of field. This A cam angle is filmed on the 50 millimeter prime at 1.4. And then this B cam angle is being filmed on the 24 to 70, specifically at 70 millimeters 2.8. As you can see, the 50 millimeter prime is just a gorgeous lens, especially for interviews or any time where you want that natural human eye focal length 
and for your subject to have separation from their environment. At least on the Sigma 50 Prime, which retails brand new for $850, the autofocus when paired with Sony cameras is so good that I can confidently shoot at 1.4 and be confident I'm in focus the whole time. And the final element of the 50 Prime is, of course, its low light capability as it is so fast. So pair this lens with any camera that's capable of you know, shooting at a high ISO, which is most camera these days, and you can pretty much film in the dark. And uh, these these lenses, these cameras, they just make me feel so spoiled for the camera technology that we get to use every day. So that is my list of essential lenses for the documentary cinematographers out there who, like me, are trying to keep their kit lightweight, versatile, and minimal. Which brings me to you. What are your thoughts? Am I crazy for these selections? Or do you wanna back me up on these picks? Drop a comment below with your thoughts and I'll be sure to jump in there and respond to every single one. I appreciate you being here, especially during these early stages, early days of my YouTube journey. And I hope these videos are bringing you value. I'll see you next week. And until then, go out and tell some stories.